Hello, and welcome to our channel. A special welcome to all our subscribers, thank you for being here. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell, so you're always up to date with our latest videos. Let's dive into today's topic. Today you will learn the concept of the bills of materials or BOMs, routes, and operations. While each company's manufacturing processes are distinct, the fundamental elements within the production control module are often quite similar, regardless of the production environment. Initiating a production order signifies a request to begin manufacturing the specified quantity of items. The production order encompasses all relevant information about the item to be produced. This includes either a list of raw materials from the BOM or a formula that may include coproducts and byproducts, along with the necessary resources, routes, and operations. Whether a company manufactures items to order, to stock, or based on custom engineering, the production control module's features can be utilized to adjust production orders, ensuring they meet specific production needs efficiently. In order to start using the BOM functionality, you will need to create a working time calendar to define the availability of the resource capacity based on date and time. You can create an overall calendar for your production and several calendars for resources that operate at different times or shifts. You can also create a separate calendar for different resource groups. To create a calendar, you can navigate to Organization Administration, Setup, Calendars, Calendars. Then you need to create resources. Resources are the company's total working resources. They can be anything that is used to create, produce, or deliver a good and or service over and beyond the materials consumed in the process. Resources can be of different types, including machines, tools, people, vendors, or locations. Resource Types You create resource types in the Organization Administration module. They're used in production, along with the calendar, to manage the overall capacity of a company's equipment and resources. Each resource can be associated with a resource type, and one or multiple resources can exist in any given resource type. The following resource types are available in supply chain management. Vendor, use this type for operations or tasks performed by an outside resource or subcontractor. A vendor number can be associated with this kind of resource to help with scheduling and tracking. Human resources, use this type to define when personnel or a group of employees conduct an operation. Machine, use this type to tie an individual machine or group of machines with a resource. It's the most frequently used type of resource. Tool, use this type to control and schedule the reservations of a tool. Use this type only when capacity is limited. Location, use this type to control and schedule the reservations of a specific location. Facility, a building or fixed structure that is required to perform an activity. Resource capabilities. You assign resource capabilities to an operations resource. A resource can have more than one capability assigned to it, and a capability can be assigned to more than one resource. You can also assign capabilities to resources on a temporary basis by defining a start date and expiration date on the capability assignment. If a resource loses a capability due to expiration, it can't be scheduled for production tasks requiring that specific feature until the capability is renewed. When defining resource requirements for a production route, you can specify one or more capabilities as requirements. When scheduling production, the capabilities required for each route operation are matched with the capabilities of the defined resources. The resources with capabilities that satisfy the requirements are then selected. When defining capabilities for different resources, you should set up capabilities so that different processing speeds are set up as different capabilities. The following screenshot displays the list of resources for the selected capability of assembly. Let us see now the bill of materials. The bill of materials, called BOM is one of the most important elements in a discrete manufacturing company. Before a company can produce a product, it must know what components are included and how many of these components are needed to make the product. The BOM has all the ingredients, components, parts, or raw materials necessary to make one finished product. 
The bill of materials is one of the cornerstones in the definition of the production process. Manufacturing companies use BOMs to track and plan which components are required to produce a product. A BOM is a comprehensive list of all the components, parts, raw materials, assemblies, and their quantities that are required to make a finished product. BOMs are used to specify ingredients or subordinate components that are physically required to make each assembled part number or item in production. If a company only produces several simple products, production can be scheduled manually with the correct BOM parts arriving on the production floor, at the correct time, and at the proper resource. Companies need to schedule and track their components and subcomponents in the most efficient, cost-effective way. BOMs define the relationship between the components and the finished product or sub-assembly. A clear definition of this relationship is important for the following tasks. Creating production orders. Performing costing calculations. Performing item planning, which ensures that the correct products are purchased and produced in the right quantities at the right time. Ensuring correct stock levels. Ensuring that correct components are used to build a quality product. Every item that must be financially accounted for in an inventory or in the costing phase must be included in the BOM. The level of detail to include is determined by the company's production and accounting needs. For example, items such as nuts, bolts, screws, and nails are frequently not included in BOMs because the cost of tracking these items is higher than their actual value. Although BOMs define the components and their relationships, they don't define the sequence of steps to produce or assemble the finished item. These steps are defined on the route. In this video we will see how to create a BOM and how to configure the steps to produce that that BOM that we call the route. Actually a BOM consists of products that are in your inventory. Therefore, it's important to remind you about product definitions, which are created independently of a legal entity. Core values such as product number, type, and name are shared values across all legal entities in the organization. Some core values can be overridden by a legal entity, such as the search name, whereas other values are kept as key definition attributes and therefore cannot be changed other than on the product definition. Let us see some of the key elements of the BOM. First, a product. A product is a uniquely identifiable product. It serves as a core product that doesn't vary. Therefore, no product dimensions can be associated with the definition. Second, a product master. A product master is a standard or functional product representation that is the basis for configuring product variants. The variations are configured by selecting a configuration technology, which can be determined either by a set of predefined product dimensions or by using product configurations in sales scenarios. Product masters serve as templates or models for variants. A product master is associated with one or more product dimensions. Third, a product variant. A product variant is the configuration of a product master. Based on the choice of the configuration technology, the variant can be either predefined by using the product dimensions of its master or configured by using a product configuration tool. BOMs can contain items or service types, which could have either product or product master subtypes with specific variants in supply chain management, depending on whether the item is purchased or produced in-house. The product types that are used in a BOM are as follows. Item, these types are products that are purchased or produced but are frequently included in the production of manufactured items. An item in a BOM that is defined as product type item is either purchased from an outside source or produced in-house, depending on the default order type setting. When the default order type is set to purchase order, then the item is purchased. When the default order type is either production or Kanban, then the item is manufactured. Service, these types are items that are used, such as the service that you're buying when you're sourcing an operation in a production order to a vendor, which is called subcontracting. An item in a BOM that is defined as product type service represents and quantifies a service that is part of the manufacturing process. For example, an item of type service can be the number of hours that are entered by each resource for services that are performed during the manufacturing process. When creating a BOM you will need to specify which of type it belongs. 
the BOM line types are as follows. 1. Item, select this line type for materials or services that are directly consumed and that don't require further explosion or pegged supply. 2. Pegged supply, when you use this line type, a reference production order is created for the BOM line item when the production order is estimated. When a BOM line is set to pegged supply, then that item will be pegged or signaling a product demand requirement, according to the method of production and not fixed by a warehouse. 3. The Phantom. This line type is basically a placeholder for components that aren't tracked if they are in production but are instead included and accounted for in the master BOM. Phantom BOMs enable master planning to calculate requirements for the needed components, even though the item is only occasionally used in the manufacturing process. 4. Vendor. These types are components that are purchased from an external vendor. In this case, a purchase order is automatically generated when a planned order is firmed. When the production is created manually, the purchase order is created when the production order is estimated. Bill of Materials is available from Product Information Management, Bills of Materials and Formulas, Bills of Materials. Let us see this example. A legal entity that makes flashlights uses a BOM that contains a plastic body, light bulb, battery, and lens. The purchase manager has to buy light bulbs, batteries, and lenses. He does need to purchase the plastic bodies because they are produced in-house. When creating the BOM for the flashlight, you need to enter the lines for the light bulb, battery, and lens by using the item line type. Then enter the plastic body of the flashlight in the BOM that is produced in-house by using the pegged supply line type. This process helps guarantee that a production order for the body is created when the production order for the finished good is estimated. In our next video we will see BOM features.